Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. A quick intro to it. I've been asked many times to do a cooking stream. I don't have a very good way to stream downstairs. The internet downstairs is not great. My desktop is a little too bulky to move up and down. So I decided to record it and post it on YouTube. I'd love to know what you guys think about it. The actual recipe is from Sam the Cooking Guy. He is a YouTuber and restaurateur. I highly encourage you to go on YouTube, search Sam the Cooking Guy, subscribe to his channel, watch his videos. He has great content. He is a very big inspiration for me um, in the sense that he got me cooking and got me to really love cooking again. And also, I just really appreciate his uh, realism with cooking. So I think you guys would really enjoy it. And it's something I'm trying to emulate uh, in my own way when I cook. As far as the actual quality and the equipment I'm using, I'm using uh, my iPhone 11. It's not even a pro. It's just an iPhone 11 on a Nintendo Switch stand in this recording, which is in the shot for half of it. Um, so I apologize. It's going to trigger some people. There's some pretty bad background noises that time. You can hear like my daughter at one point. You can hear my dog. Um, this was totally off the cuff. No script. I never even cooked a recipe before. I just wanted to try it. So kind of get a feel for if it was something I even enjoyed doing, which it turns out I really, really enjoy doing it. So I invested in some equipment. I'll have a, a proper mic and some lighting and a tripod for the next set of videos that I do on cooking whenever they come out. I don't really have a, a schedule for it yet, but I really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys did too. Uh, please post in the comments anything that you might like to see or if there's like an ingredient that you want to see me work with. Um, I fairly versed in the kitchen so i think i could probably tackle a lot of different things and if i can i'll let you know uh i'll defer you to sam the cooking guy so enjoy the video guys first thing we're gonna do we're gonna get some garnishes prepped uh that's gonna go on top of the chili cheese dog then we're actually gonna make the chili um it's a beanless chili by the way i don't like beans i'm really not big on them in chili um and i think for a, for a chili cheese dog um i just think it's gonna be better i just think it's gonna be better uh, and we're going to be cooking it um, with veal. It's going to be delicious. Right. Let's get going. First thing we're going to do, we're going to prep some stuff that's going to go on top of our chili cheese dog. And uh, we're going to go from there. So we're going to put some onion on top of it. Uh, we're also going to put some jalapeno on top of it. And I'm just going to do a really fine raw jalapeno. I'm super not crazy about, but... Um, I was originally going to put it in the chili. Bet you that sounds great. I was originally going to put it in the chili. But I've got to cook with my daughter in mind, who is only uh, just about 10 months. And she's at this point in her life where she is trying new foods and finger foods and stuff. And I didn't want to make this too spicy. There's already going to be some spicy elements in it. So... I figured I'll leave this to the side. I'll chop it up. It'll go. Oh, uh, I got a couple bowls here that we're going to put it all in. So uh, some of these I'm going to save. This is literally just going to be a garnish. So first things first, when you are cooking, don't be afraid, one, to fuck things up because you're going to. Two, um, go slow. Be patient. Don't be afraid to be a novice. I'm a novice. You're not going to see any kind of professional skills whatsoever here. Um, so if you're here because you're like, oh man, I want to go like learn from this awesome chef, you are at the wrong YouTube channel. First thing though, you do need very sharp, very good knife. Doesn't have to be expensive, but don't be afraid if you're going to spend a little bit of money, um, you know, invest in a really good knife and even invest in a knife sharpener, fairly inexpensive. So just keep everything tight. Use your finger to guide the knife so you don't cut yourself here and Get, you know, whatever size you want, uh, just go there. So we're just gonna go, I just kinda want this to be like a little topping on. Um, so there we go. And it's just for really, me and my wife are really the only ones that are gonna have one. And then just for, we'll just get rid of that guy, but just so we have some diversity here, let's just do this. The last thing I wanna do is cut myself in front of you guys. And we're just gonna, And a chato. Okay. That's it. This is just going to be a little topping. 
We'll just get that aside. Myself here. So we're just gonna go here and just straight down. There we go. Bada bing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to scoop out this middle part, this like stemmy membrane-y part in the seeds. Um, I don't really need it for anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just take a spoon. Get it all out of there. It wasn't exactly graceful, but that's okay. There we go. So I don't need this to be Now, I could have done that over a trash can, which would have made more sense, but I just kind of wanted you guys to see how to do that. So now that we've got that, when you're cutting stuff like this, guys, don't cut it like that. It's wobbly, it's round. Nice and flat, nice and flat. Get rid of that top part, and then just kind of think about how you want it. So we're gonna do kind of like these strips, like so. Just let the knife cut through. And I'm just being so cautious right now because the last thing I want to do when talking to you guys is cut myself. So, okay, now that we've got it there, we're just going to go ahead, get it all nice and bunched. Just Keep those fingers back as best you can. Sometimes it's hard, that's okay. Just be mindful of where your fingers are when you are chopping. And when you get to the end of something and you feel like, man, I could get one more chop on this, I know it. Stop, stop there. That is the time to stop. And then just get the last little guys here. bowl. If we miss a few, that's okay. And that's just going to go on top if we want it. One of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm cooking, and when I started cooking and I started getting really into cooking, I didn't spend so much time thinking about how things looked. I just kind of just willy-nilly about shit and I didn't really think about plate presentation I mean, you don't have to get any started that's okay that's not your thing you know that's all right um but I think once you start to once I started cooking more complex recipes more simple complex recipes I should say less Gordon Ramsay and more kind of just basic stuff and really getting a feel for how flavors work you start thinking about, okay, what, what's next? What can I tackle next once I have kind of these basics down? And then you start stepping up things like your plate presentation. And now, you know, I kind of think about how many colors are on the plate, you know? Is it just this brown lump of food or is it, you know, should I add a little green on top? And so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna get some chive onions and throw some chives on the top of it. And all of these beautiful red onions. Red onions, a little sweeter. And then what you could do when you have something like this here, right? You start to kind of get this pile of onions and you know, maybe they're a little thicker than you want. Now granted, once you kind of break these up a little bit, you can always just take your knife and then down on the chopping board, down here, and then kind of use it as like a, just like a little back and forth, like a seesaw. I know there's a far more technical engineering term for this. Just give it kind of a through. You could do this as much as you want. This is great for chopping up parsley or cilantro or something. You know, that way you could get this as fine as you want without, you know, hacking away at it. 
and you can see, look at that. Got a nice, nice thin shop. We could give it a little more love back here. And then over here. Beautiful. All right, so we're gonna start with some bacon. And what I've got is uh, a thick butcher cut um, apple wood smoked bacon. Um, I think this is going to be really nice. In fact, I'll try and get you guys a nice shot of it here. Uh, might be a little thick, but I think it'll be okay. I don't really know how much I want either. Um, I know I want it chopped kind of big. I bought about three quarters pound. I bought 12 strips. And what I think I want to do, I think I want to cut it down this way once. like that and then cut it this way I think I think this is what I want to do I think this will give me roughly what I'm looking for here also so while we're talking about it here um, don't be afraid to just try stuff and totally F it up uh, it's going to happen to you uh, as you cook, there's no way around it. Um, every time I cook a new recipe, I always kind of think about, all right, what am I gonna do if this goes wrong? In terms of, you know, what pizza am I ordering? Um, and, you know, what, what did go wrong? What can I do to it? Every time I cook something for the first time, I always go, it's good, it's good. Uh, but I think I can improve on it. You know, I, I think I know what to do better next time. Do it. Uh, so don't be afraid to try something and it's not right. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the bacon in. We're going to cook it a little bit. And then once it's about, I don't know. I, I think I want like kind of a crunchier texture to this. I think it'll be a nice texture in the in the chili. So once it's kind of close, then we're gonna add the veal uh, and then cook that all together. And then we're gonna add uh, some dry ingredients, some seasonings and stuff, we'll talk about it. Add some tomato sauce. We're gonna go into a full lecture about tomato sauce and then we'll go from there. So I'm kind of realizing that the stand is in the way, so I've, I've zoomed in a little bit, one to one time. Hopefully that makes it look better. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, like I said, I'm just kind of doing this off the cuff. Uh, we've got a nice hot pot here. So I, when I put in, perfect. That's what you want in here, guys. That's the sound. Get that in, yeah. And then just kind of get that and stick in. And now this is a dry pan or a dry pot because the grease and the fat from the bacon is going to be all the, the lubrication and fat in this dish that we really will need. Um, veal will go in as well. And then that's, I mean, that's it. We're not talking with a lot of ingredients here. Don't be one of those people that think everything has to be from scratch or has to be homemade and you can't use any store-bought ingredients. It's one, it's ridiculous and it's unfeasible. You know, for, for a home cook to just have everything. And if you do, great, good, God bless you if you raise your own pigs and slaughter them and make your own bacon and harness your own natural gas for your stove. Hey, more power to you. Uh, you know, you grow all your own vegetables. Perfect, good. But for a lot of us, you know, we don't. We don't do those things. You know, if you have kids, people that have multiple kids and they're trying to make dinner, you know, it's, it's not easy to get something like this together with everything fresh. So we're gonna use a lot of store-bought ingredients. In fact, there's really not much else fresh. I will say if you are going to use fresh ingredients or you want to introduce fresh ingredients, 
meats, high quality meats, fresh organic vegetables. I mean, you can see, I mean, just look how beautiful these onions are. Um, you know, when they're gonna be mixed with these chives. Um, nice, fresh, organic vegetables, if you get that. The bacon's from the butcher, the veal is from the butcher. The only other big thing I will say, if you're gonna buy, uh, it doesn't have to be this brand, uh, but European butter is just so good. And if you look at it compared to regular butter, it's just got this really gold, dark, you can just tell how rich it is. Um, it really makes a big difference. And we're gonna use this on our buns today uh, before we toast them. Uh, I was really big on sauces, like tomato sauce. My family's from Italy and I grew up in a house where sauce was made always uh, from scratch. And to this day, I still make my sauce like that. Uh, but I have learned, in fact, again, I, I'm gonna drop his name a lot here and I'm, uh, I'm a total fanboy, I'll be honest. Sam the cooking guy uh, has done some recipes with these kind of quick weekend sauces as we call them. They're phenomenal, they're delicious, they're so good. They're out of a can. You put some fresh ingredients into it. Uh, you could use some, you know, some, some good basil or uh, some basil leaves or oregano. Um, you know, whatever else you add to it, and you can turn a very cheap store-bought ingredient into something that is delicious. I'm just gonna break it up in there. And there we go, look at that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And ideally, what we're gonna get is beautiful. So just break it up. Um, don't be afraid to let it sit a little bit. It's okay. It's not gonna, nothing's gonna happen. And you can see we're starting to get this a little bit of color on this veal. Let me show you guys. If, if you want to see just what I'm working with here, okay, this is, this is it. This is what I'm filming off of. A roll of paper towels close to my gas stove. I'm sure that's not a fire hazard. With a candle on top, just in case if I do catch it on fire, it'll smell good. Uh, with a Nintendo Switch stand uh, on top of it. And then I just kind of have my iPhone precariously placed through it. And of course, it's never cooking without a cooking buddy. What are you waiting for, bacon? Are we waiting on bacon? Yeah. So we've got, there we go, there's our ingredients. I've got everything. What else. we're gonna do, and I've never done this before, uh, we're just gonna make a couple of slits not all the way through. The theory that has been demonstrated is that in doing this, uh, one, it allows the hot dogs to cook much faster, of course, because they kind of open up a little bit. And when you kind of pour the chili in it, they kind of open up a little spirally. teaspoon of onion powder and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this and put in what I think is gonna be how much I want so a teaspoon of onion powder a teaspoon of garlic powder and I'm probably blocking like all the light in here and about a half tablespoon of chili powder Get all that in there. And then let's mix that up. Let's get rid of our, that's the problem with using a roll of paper towels for your camera stand. Let's get that all mixed in and mm, it smells amazing. It smells amazing. Just break up the big chunks of meal in there. All right, we're gonna let that go, and then we're just gonna add, obviously, the salt, kosher salt. Um, kosher salt, guys, always, 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 always. Um, you have this beautiful, coarse kosher salt. Uh, it's just delicious. I'm not gonna put all that in, but. Use salt more than you think. 
Um, that's what I would say with salt. And then pepper, fresh ground. That's about half. Hmm, maybe a little bit more. Okay. So we've got that. Um, just a little bit of ketchup here, just like two squirts. Now for the mustard, I'm using a sweet hot pepper mustard. Um, this is a lot spicier, just if you taste it. There we go. Um, it doesn't, it does lose a lot of the heat, so. And then a tablespoon of These are these diced chipotle chili peppers. Uh, these are delicious, really, in anything. So I'll add that much there. Then let's get end up all in there. Do, 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 do. Don't really know how much I want of our beer. And well, and then we'll just see kind of how this looks. And if it's not where we want it, we can fix that. Everything is fixable. But I think that's about where I want it. It's going to thicken up. Um, Add a little bit more beer in there. And then this is now on low. And we're just gonna let that do its thing. It'll take about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, so. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna do the buns. All we're doing with the buns is we're gonna butter them on the tops, uh, and they're gonna get grilled when we grill the hot dogs. Uh, so they toast up really nice, real simple. What we're using, are the top slice buns, not the standard ones where they open on the side, but these ones that open up top. Um, I just think that's gonna work better for a chili dog. Grill, nice and hot. Let's go ahead and get our doggies on. right in this nice hot middle part of the grill. As you can kind of see, we're already getting grill marks here. Look at that. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. You can see these guys over here. I'll kind of, look at this. Let me see if you guys can see this. Look at these nice kind of openings here. Um, which is just gonna let all that really good chili just sink right in. And I apologize here, I'm kind of doing this with a hand holding it. That's it. Simple. Simple, guys. Look how good these look. I'll grab this again. Look at that. Look at that. Mm, delicious. All those slits opened up. Exactly what we wanted. Exactly what we wanted. All right, on to the last part, guys. All right. The moment of truth. Bun down. We toasted this bun. It's got a nice crunchy exterior, which will keep it from getting soggy. All right, get our hot dog down and we're gonna think about, look at that. Look at all those beautiful grill marks in there and the slits, how they open up. All right, place our 
Please, I wish this bun had cooperated, but that's okay, you know? Veal, remember we use veal in this, guys, not ground beef. And I think what we're gonna do is kind of like that. Oh no. So as I said, first time you make something, doesn't always go according to plan. And I think if you like a kind of more saucier uh, chili, I would probably use a little bit more than eight ounces of the tomato sauce. Um, but I think if you like it a little drier, which I do, I actually don't mind it a little, I don't like it soaking wet necessarily. So there we go, our chili is down. Just a little bit of our Chopped up red onions. Can't think about where those guys are gonna go. Just a little handful of our chives, and I actually probably should have put the cheese down first. That's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna take our cheese, and this is just a Mexican blend with cheese. Need to be tons. Yeah, well, it would have been better if I'd done the cheese first. That's okay. That way you'd have all. We have to put a little bit more on here. There we go. Look at that. Boom. And then we still have a little bit of our jalapeno. And there you have it, guys. My first attempt at a cooking video. This is the problem. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it, guys. Use my fingers. Kind of get it all in there. Mm. All right, do that. You'll thank me, I promise.